welcome back for another book talk video it's time for throwback thursday and today i want to talk about one of my all-time favorite works of literature shakespeare's play hamlet i've mentioned many times that for me plays are meant to be seen some sort of performance production so i'm going to recommend sir kenneth branagh's version of hamlet which is a very long film version but it is rather accurate to the play but i consider kenneth branagh to be one of the best Shakespearean actors ever and probably our best Shakespearean director. He's produced so many great works of Shakespeare, not only as play performances, but also given us theatrical versions of them. And here he actually holds pretty true to the story, which I really enjoy. The uniforms, the costuming, the sets are all absolutely amazing and the acting is brilliant. They brought in so many famous actors for this film but not only that but also a lot of comedians a lot of actors who are known for being very funny in what are some small roles so i was really impressed by that and sometimes it's a little too much star power perhaps because the point at which robin williams shows up in the film it's a little distracting to be like oh my goodness that's robin williams but anyway hamlet is an amazing story if you're the kind of person who went through school and had some mean teacher force you to read Hamlet, then there's a chance that you did not enjoy the play just out of principle, out of stubbornness, out of spite, out of the fact that someone was making you read the play or watch the play and you were not enjoying it. It's also possible that you've seen a performance that was not as nuanced or as well played as Sir Kenneth Branagh's version. For example, I know there is a film version with Mel Gibson in it and there are some really good quality parts of that version but my goodness Mel Gibson's Hamlet really comes across as insane very insane I like the way that Kenneth Branagh plays him to where you get more of a sense that Hamlet is pretending to be insane and that it's a calculated strategy though there are parts in which even with Kenneth Branagh you're questioning has he really lost it finally all right for those of you who don't know the story of Hamlet is not an original story but Shakespeare tells it so well. It's the Prince of Denmark, which is really like Hamlet Jr. His father, the senior Hamlet, is murdered. Well, he's dead, presumed murdered, because his brother marries his wife and takes over the throne, while young Hamlet is off away at school. It's a strange sort of series of events, because Hamlet arrives because he's received a letter saying that his father's dead and that his mom has married his uncle and that his uncle is now king. But wouldn't you expect for the prince to become king? It's all, to me, very questionable. But one of the reasons that the queen needed to marry, remarry so quickly was young Hamlet was out of country. He couldn't just immediately become king. And they did not want to be perceived as weak as a nation because they do have potential enemies that could invade the nation. There's this whole background story with Fortinbras where young Fortinbras's father, the elder Fortinbras, had been killed by Hamlet's father. There's a whole thing going on with the theme of sons having to avenge their fathers and what that, that means. Of course, it's sexist to say that people are going to look at Queen Gertrude and say, oh no, it's a woman on the throne. She's going to look weak. But that's part of the history and part of the story and how all that adds up. But anyway, Hamlet shows up very upset that his uncle has married his mother and he's suspicious of things he's already emotional you know he's that brooding emotional young man and then we get from the beginning of the play the ghost of his father demanding vengeance the ghost of his father telling him that yes he was murdered and that he needs to be avenged but hamlet being the wise young philosopher actor thinker that he is hamlet's quite a renaissance man he quite questions the ghost, not not to the ghost, of course, but to himself later, and thinks maybe that's an evil spirit trying to trick me. And so he explores trying to find evidence. Hamlet becomes a detective character, trying to find evidence that, in fact, his father was murdered, which leads to all kinds of excitement in the play. And you, you have to track who is loyal to Hamlet, because 
remember these old Shakespearean plays are also morality plays, and this is ultimately a tragedy. You know going into it that it's a tragedy, so you should already visualize a lot of people are going to die. So to me, part of the fun of the play is tracking which characters have sinned, because if we get a true sense of justice, it's the characters who have sinned in some way or another who will die or have something bad happen to them. And you have to wonder, as the play continues, the characters who are loyal and true versus the characters who betray other people and commit some sort of a sin or problem. I should also warn you that this is the play that has Polonius in it, and Polonius is the king's advisor. Shakespeare meant for Polonius to be seen as a foolish advisor, and one of the horrible ironies of history is that people often quote lines in real life from Polonius as if William Shakespeare meant them as good advice when really Shakespeare was giving you a foolish advisor giving advice. So it's always funny to me when people quote things like this above all else to thine own self be true. Like that's something that Polonius says. Polonius is a foolish advisor. Thus Shakespeare was trying to say it is foolish to always put yourself above others. So be careful when you quote Shakespeare. There's a chance you're actually quoting a character like Polonius and Shakespeare meant the opposite of what the character was saying when you really do your analysis of it. My goodness, what a great play. I could go on and on with so many great characters and situations, but I guess the last two elements that I must mention are that this is also the play with the to be or not to be speech, which is so powerful, and it's also the play with the graveyard scene talking about mortality, Hamlet holding the skull of Yorick, who was a court jester for his father when he was a child and thinking about that sense of life and death and how, like poor Yorick, we are all destined to someday be in the ground or something to that effect. Uh, very powerful language in this play. So great themes to think about, really interesting twists and turns along the way. If you didn't really give Hamlet a chance when you were younger, I highly recommend revisiting it, especially if you have about four and a half hours to watch the Kenneth Branagh version of the play. All right, that's it for today's book talk. Every day is a great day for book talk, especially about an amazing Shakespearean play. Peace.